My full name is Herbert Fantel, F-A-N-T-L was my birth name, but when we came to America, it was customary, we were told to have an E on the end, so now it's F-A-N-T-L-E, and that's my full name on, on all my records now. And I was born, well, I can tell you how old I am. I, <laughs> was born on uh, March 18th, 1929. I'll be 84 in 19 days. I knew on the 11th of March, 1938, that we, were, we had to leave Vienna because the Jewish people uh, were, became aware of everything about that date. That's the date they destroyed all the synagogues in Vienna Kristallnacht, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it just so happens that the only one synagogue was not destroyed, and that was the one my cousin that lives in Iowa City was married in because it was a synagogue built inside a building, so they didn't know that it was a synagogue, mm -hmm. so, so it didn't get damaged. And, uh, when I went back to Vienna, in, uh, and I was invited back to Vienna by the Austrian government, uh, let's see now, we're about, in 2008, we had services there on Friday night, and I really enjoyed being there. It was quite an experience. On about the 15th of March, I was still eight, 1938, my mother took me downtown Vienna, and I was. That is the day that Hitler gave his welcoming speech to the Austrians, and uh, she wouldn't let me go too close. She said it was too dangerous. But I could see a good million people were there, cheering and celebrating. I guess they had laid the groundwork for many, many years. They killed the prime minister in uh, 1934, uh, Dorfus, who was probably not pro-Nazi and uh, brought in other, their own people and they laid a lot of groundwork. And then on, we knew that night that we had to leave, but we didn't know where to go and what to do and so I was, then I turned nine and then most of the time I was left in Vienna, I was nine years old. And I guess a nine-year-old really doesn't get involved in too much of that, so I uh, uh, I sort of knew what was going on, but uh, didn't affect me that much my, I, until, I believe in August of 38, all the Jewish students were required to drop out of our school and go to a Jewish school in the different district of Vienna. And so then, as uh, I had to go there, I knew something was up and my parents were setting things in motion, trying to get affidavits or whatever you needed, to, to visas and things like that, whatever you needed to get out. And it was not easy to get out, to uh, go anywhere. It was very, uh, you could, the first year or so, it was quite easy to get out. But it was hard to find a country that would take you. In fact, the only country that had opened doors to the Jews of Austria, as I know of, was China. Shanghai, China was open. If you had the money to book a cruise, a ship, you could go there without any questions asked. And some of our friends did go there, but on uh, November 9th, November 9th, 1938, was Crystal Night, and my father never came home from work, and he worked at the bank in uh, Lenderbank, and uh, we found out the next day he was taken to Dachau, and that set my mother in motion. 
she had one thought in mind, she's going to get him out. And that was not an easy task. Dachau, I think, from what I've heard, was very difficult to get out of. But she did succeed and uh, come uh, Friday the 13th uh, in January of, two th of 1939, one day he came home. We didn't recognize him. He lost about 40 pounds. He weighed about 160, I guess, before. so, And he was beat up pretty bad, but he made it home and he said, let's, we got to go some, we got to get out. We keep, we're not going to, we got to get out. So anyway, they, they set the mo everything in motion. And we had some friends, good friends, very close friends at that time that uh, saw to it that we got, uh, well, first of all, my relatives, most of them didn't get out. But uh, Uncle Oscar, who uh, was a lieutenant in the Austrian army, they sent him to Lutz, the concentration camp in Mox, and he was killed there. And a number of people in Austria were sent to Theresienstadt, and there were other concentration camps where they were sent to. And uh, we uh, finally heard from our friends in England, and through their help, we got a 90 days visa to go to England on the terms that we leave in 90 days. Well, they took a gamble on it, and bigger England's better than Austria, so we left for England, and we were sponsored by two families in Scotland, Musselboro, Scotland, the suburb of Edinburgh, they were extremely good to us. They were a Lord and a Lady Mears and a Lord and a Lady Walton. And we stayed in touch with them for many years afterwards. They were real, real good to us. And uh, we left Vienna with $15, equivalent, I think, of $15. That's all that we could do. And my mother was determined not to leave anything behind. And when she made up her mind, she did it. And we had a big lift. It's a wooden box, huge wooden box. I don't know. The dimensions very large. But she, we had a piano in there and a couple closets, a lot of stuff. She, she took everything she could and put it in that lift. And we didn't see it till 1941. I don't know, it was in storage because we didn't have enough money to get it out of storage. So. That was a problem, but we did get that eventually. That piano is now in my son's in Milwaukee's living room. It's a Bösendorfer. And if you know about pianos, that's a very good piano. Uh, I never had a bar mitzvah. At age 13, you're supposed to have a bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well... Why, did you, why didn't you have it? Well... First of all, our family had no, no spare money. If you wanted to belong to a temple, you needed money. And uh, they sent me to it, and I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. didn't feel welcome there. Anyway, I didn't really like it there anyway, so my parents didn't pursue the issue, and it didn't come up till last year when I was 83 and uh, got a call from my rabbi. And he says, you should have a bar mitzvah. I says, yeah, what do I do? And, you know, I don't know any Hebrew to speak of and know very little. And he said, we'll work it out. He says, I'll tell you what, I got a one-day class in Hebrew. If you come to that, you'll make it. I said, all right, I'll come to it. So I came to it, and I found Hebrew very difficult to learn in one day. <laughs> So he says, never mind. He says, you're going to make it no matter what. Mm. So, But how was that? I mean, you waited so long. I mean, why not? That's the, the rules of the church. Of tell the, me, what, what do you mean? Well, they say if you miss it at age 13, yes. then you have a second chance at 83 because it's 70 plus 13. 
I don't know what the significance is of third of seventy, but that's the why it comes up at age eighty three. No, no, here it is. No, no, you I mean, here. Yeah. Should I, oh, come there. For, yeah. Should I look at the painting? Yes. Should yes. I turn the light on for? Uh, for no, you can uh, uh, come over here. What if I don't know? Well, you're uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to say whatever you think, uh, for better or for worse. You know what you should do, ask Betty. Oh, go this way, go yeah. this way. No, no, first you want your opinion, later we can call him. Well, yeah. uh, pretty realistic, I guess, right? I look sort of mean. Mean? Yeah, don't I? <laughs> It's a good, very good portrait. It's not I mean, you're very. We don't want to do it over. <laughs> 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 <laughs>